Good evening and welcome. Welcome to Book Club Review 2023, an evening of literature, book talking, and lots of fun. Presented by the fantastic team at the Central Branch. So get your pen and paper ready. And we welcome questions. Please add them to the Q&A box and we will take them at the end. This event is being recorded and we will share a link to, to that a little bit later. Uh, I think we can have the next slide. Thank you. And now our HCLS land acknowledgement. We want to respectfully honor the Susquehanna Confederation who governed, lived, farmed, and hunted on the land now called Howard County. Their nations conceded into land treaties in 1652 and 1661 after English colonizers ended their generational governance and stewardship of the land Howard County is built upon. This practice of land acknowledgement is to honor and respect the indigenous inhabitants, both from the past and the present. Um, hi, I'm Rohini Gupta, the Adult Learning and Innovation Specialist, and I wanted to share about a really special event that we have coming up on October 15th, Sunday, 2.30 uh, p.m. at the Miller, Miller Library. It is also uh, virtual. Uh, join with librarians, publishers, authors, poets, and your community in supporting the essential right to read at the Freedom to Read Roundtable presented in partnership with the Howard County Library System and the Howard County Poetry and Literature Society. Uh, we have a very distingu distinguished panel of speakers, foremost among them being James McBride. This summer, McBride returns with his signature hope, humor, and humanity in his best-selling novel, The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store. Uh, as, as many of you may know, James McBride won, uh, won the National Book Award for Fiction for his book, The Good Lord Bird. His best-selling novel, Miracle at St. Anna, was, adap was adapted into a film by Spike Lee, and he was also awarded the National Humanities Medal by President Obama. Along with, with him, we have Alexandra Petri. She is a columnist for the Washington Post and is an amazing speaker. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Richard Bell, fan favorite historian, and many of you may have already attended his lectures, which are always, always fascinating. And finally, on the panel, we have Emily Drabinsky. She is the current president of ALA, that is the American Library Association. And we look forward to having a really thoughtful and interesting discussion. Uh, this, as I mentioned, this event can be uh, attended in person or uh, virtually. However, and here is the little secret, all in-person attendees will receive a complimentary copy of James McBride's new book. Um, so I hope you will sign up right now. Thank you so much. Well, I am clapping already because that is surely exciting. Thank you, Rohini. Thumbs up to you, Rohini. So all of the titles that you will hear about this evening are from our books for discussion list. I'm Beth Haynes, she, her, and I'm the assistant manager here at the Central Branch in beautiful downtown Columbia. We'd like to thank our colleague Zinka, an instructor from our East Columbia branch who is serving as our producer. Now our books for discussion list that will be coming out, you'll get copies of it after our presentation, is actually our books for discussion 2024 list because there'll be books we'll be reading and discussing throughout 2024. Now here are the parameters for our list. All of the books, HCLS has to own at least six copies. Pretty much every branch owns a copy, and the titles on this list were not eligible for previous books for discussion lists. They're, so they are new ones. 
And of course, there are space limitations. We can only fit about 100 titles on our list. And I will tell you, it can be brutal when we have to cut titles, and we usually do. But we'll email you the list, the entire slide deck, and other resources after our presentation. So are we ready for our first round? In each round, what we'll do as we promote a title, we'll give the title, the author, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, we'll do our promo, then we'll state the title and author again. So you'll be sure to catch all these great hits. Let's start out with my first selection, Dinosaurs by Lydia Millet. Fellow readers, are you tired of books with despicable characters? Books with immoral, self-absorbed pains in the neck who make you say, who cares? Dump the whole lot of them. Oh, like books like Gone Girl and The Dinner and Normal People by Sally Rooney. Well, I have the cure for you. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs features Gil, a kind but quirky. I mean, he walks across the United States from New York to Arizona to settle into a new house and into a new perspective on life. His interactions and those of his neighbors end up reflecting so many forms of human love. I even ended up feeling some sympathy for the neighborhood bully. If you seek a spare, beautifully written novel offering characters with whom you will connect, Dinosaurs is the one for you. Oh, and the title? Topic for discussion, Dinosaurs by Lydia Millet. Hi everyone, my name is Michaela Baxter and I'm an instructor and research specialist here at the Central Branch. My pronouns are she, her. And before I talk about my first book, I wanted to mention some information about the one hour technology assistance appointments that Howard County Library System offers. One of our knowledgeable instructors will guide you through the process of setting up your new e-reader or help you download some of the library's free reading apps. To borrow e-books and e-audiobooks. We can also assist with other technology questions for your computer, phone, or any other device. Interested? Visit the library's website at hclibrary.org or call your local branch to set up an appointment today. And for my first pick, I wanted to talk about Lady Tan's Circle of Women by Lisa C. Fiction. In this captivating novel, Lisa C. takes us on a journey through 17th century China where we meet Yun Xian, a determined and intelligent girl born into an elite family, destined for a traditional life as a wife and mother. However, fate has something else in store for her as she discovers her passion for healing and becomes one of the first female practitioners of Chinese medicine. Alongside her lifelong friend, Mei Ling, a midwife in training, they navigate societal expectations and break barriers to help women from all walks of life. But as she gains recognition and respect, she must face the challenges that come with being a pioneering woman in a male-dominated world. Through richly drawn characters and immersive detail, Lady Tan's Circle of Women explores the themes of friendship, resilience, and the power of education in shaping a woman's destiny. Lady Tan Circle of Women by Lisa C. Hi, my name is Angela Best. I'm an instructor and research specialist here at the Central Branch. My pronouns are she, her. My first book, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, fiction. Set in the 16th century, the main character, Lucrezia, is the fifth of eight children of an influential Italian family. She's the least understood. She loves animals and has a keen sense of hearing. 
after her older sister dies, to honor the agreement between the families, Lucrezia marries her sister's fiance. Her husband, who has recently become Duke, must have an heir. This drives his actions. After joining his household, a marriage portrait is commissioned and three artists arrive. Issues of innocence, family dynamics, fertility, relationships between those in power and the people who work for them, religion and artistic talents are raised. At the beginning of the book, Lucrezia anticipates an event. Does this event come to pass? Read The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell to find out. Hello, my name is Wendy Kamasar, she, her, instructor and research specialist at the Central Branch. Did you know that HCLS has over 20 book clubs for adults? All branches offer groups with a wide variety of genres and themes from romance, mystery, or fantasy, like Zinka's in Other Worlds at East Columbia, to ones that feature titles from our equity collection, like Ash and Angie's Reads of Acceptance. There's something for everyone, days or evenings, in branches or off-site locations, including virtual sessions. Find out more by visiting hclibrary.org under classes and events. Okay, my first pick is Do Tell, a scandalous debut by Lindsay Lynch, fiction. In the golden age of Hollywood, failed actress turned gossip columnist Edie O'Dair is riding out the final year of her studio contract when a rising starlet hands her a note alleging an assault from an A-list actor. Public opinion holds more weight than facts, but Edie's pen holds an even greater power. What she chooses to do next will have huge consequences. There are parties and gowns, backlot brawls, courtroom drama, and the spilling of oh so much tea. Underneath the glamor of 1930s Hollywood, Themes of fame, notoriety, and power still resonate today. Do Tell by Lindsay Lynch. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Emily Bell. I'm an instructor and research specialist at the Central Branch, and my pronouns are she, her. My first round pick is Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong, fiction. Oh, my goodness. You will need to buckle in for this one because this book is a wild ride. Our narrator, June, is waiting for her big break to come in the publishing world. She's friends with literary sensation Athena Liu, but is secretly jealous of all of her success. When Athena dies in a freak accident while the two are hanging out, June decides to steal Athena's final manuscript. It's a well-researched, breathtaking novel about Chinese laborers in World War I, a topic significant to Athena because of her Chinese heritage. June makes a few edits and sends it to her publisher as if the book were her own. And the mess that unfolds from there is something to behold. This is such an addictive read, but it also deals with a bevy of discussable topics like cultural appropriation and plagiarism. And it's one of those books that you will absolutely need to talk to somebody about as soon as you finish it. So thought provoking and darkly humorous, Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. Hi, I'm Angie Angles, instructor and research specialist here at Central, and my pronouns are she, her. Someday, maybe, by Onyi Nwam Belang, fiction. I want to say from the start that this is a very emotionally intense book, but it is well worth the journey. And we meet on New Year's Eve, Eve unfortunately discovers the lifeless body of her husband. And after 10 years of blissful marriage, she is stunned to find out that he has died without leaving a note. The mystery deepens and, and leaving Eve and those closest to her husband, she and her husband, I'm sorry, to her and her husband, um, without any clue of what happened. And she's, Eve is dealing with her grief and her, her family tries to understand and help her, but they're she's while they're in the dark of this devastating event. On top of everything else, Eve has a mother-in-law who blames her for what has happened, and her acerbicness with her is just heartbreaking. There's a lot more that goes on, including a turn of events that sets Eve on a new path. Now, while this book may be off-putting with its emotional content at times, 
Noah Benelli's writing is a work of art offering profound insights and exquisite prose that capture the vast ever evolving nature of grief. It is a very deep and affecting book and I highly recommend it. Someday Maybe by Oni Noam Benelli. Hello, my name is Roslyn and I'm also an instructor and research specialist here at Central Branch. And here's a fun tip for you. If you're planning to host a book club in your home, don't forget to spruce up your walls with a piece from our art collection. Take home a masterpiece and hear the oohs and ahs from your guests. You can borrow framed and ready to hang pieces from our central or Glenwood branches. Find out more at hclibrary.org under special collections. And if you're picking up from our central branch, be sure to check out our new art installation outside called Good Morning Sunshine. It's guaranteed to put a smile on your face. So my first pick is The Sewing Girl's Tale, A Story of Crime and Consequences in Revolutionary America by John Wood Sweet, nonfiction. So this book is a historical drama um, about the first published rape trial in American history, which took place in 1793, New York City. It's a story of how a 17-year-old seamstress named Lana Sawyer bravely responded to what had happened to her how her family and townspeople rallied behind her, how the case was argued, and all the tumultuous events that happened after the trial. It's about class privilege and sexual double standards. We follow Lana's story through the author's meticulous research, unfolding the scenes behind the trial and recreating the deeply held feelings of revolutionary American society. This remarkable young girl faced tremendous adversity on top of the trauma she had already had to endure, and this book really just reveals just how much has changed over the last two centuries and just how much has not. The Sewing Girl's Tale by John Wood Sweet. And closing us out with the first round is me. Hi, I am Ash, my pronouns are they, them. And like most of my colleagues here, I'm also an instructor and research specialist at Central. And my first recommendation tonight is The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. Set at a stately Grafton Manor in Vermont, this mystery alternates perspective between the six contestants and the host of the hit streaming series Bake Week, which is this fictional world's version of the Great British Bake Off. In the prologue, we're immediately given a glimpse into the horror to come. On a dark and stormy night, the host of the show discovers a dead body in the baker's tent. However, the novel properly begins four days prior to the murder. We meet each of the contestants as they migrate to the state and settle in as the competition's about to begin. And Maxwell effectively uses archetypes and tropes to give each character a distinct personality, which makes this for a really fun um, ensemble cast of characters that are interesting and easy to keep track of. I love when you have, you know, a host of characters that you can clearly keep track of. During the first day of baking, questions start to arise about the fairness of the competition. Is there maybe sabotage afoot? And as more time goes by, the air of suspicion intensifies about the competition, the characters, and the history of the manor. Maxwell balances the coziness of the countryside with the suspense of the imminent murder. Who will be the victim? Who will be responsible? And who will win the competition if anyone even gets to win? These questions will keep you hungry for more until you've read the last page. The Golden Spoon by Jessa Maxwell. And that finishes our first round. Going back round to Beth. Hey, round two. Here we go. The House of Eve by Sadika Johnson, fiction. 1950s America. Eleanor attends Howard University, meets and falls in love with a fellow student who hails from a wealthy, prominent DC family. In Philadelphia, teenage Ruby can only wish for the advantages that Eleanor enjoys. Ruby's goal is to be the first person in her family to attend college. Choices and circumstances beyond their control threaten Eleanor's and Ruby's dreams. This book will pull at your heartstrings, it will keep you reading, and it will give you much to discuss. Racism, class advantages, 
and disadvantages, reproductive rights, parenthood, and the choices that parents must make. The House of Eve by Sadiqa Johnson. All right, my next pick is Goodnight Irene by Louise Alberto Urea, fiction. Set during World War II, Goodnight Irene follows the brave Irene Woodward as she escapes an abusive relationship in New York City to volunteer with the Red Cross. Joined by the fierce Dorothy Dunford, both become donut dollies, bringing comfort and companionship to soldiers facing the horrors of war. Based on the author's mother's real experiences, this moving tale showcases the heroics of women in wartime, offering an authentic and deeply emotional portrayal of what it means to fight not just for your country, but for humanity itself. Good Night, Irene by Louise Alberto Urea. So did you know that we offer free classes in a wide range of topics for adults? Yes. There are author events and book clubs, but we also have movie discussions and classes in music, arts and craft and gardening. There are classes in business, health, genealogy and race equity and inclusion. Sessions for learning a world language are also held. We offer STEM related classes at all of our branches. Look out for classes like e-reader labs and tech time to improve your technology and computer skills. Classes in all areas are free. Many are in person, but some are online. To find out more, go to the library's website, choose classes and events at the top, then use the green box on the left to filter for adult only classes and your preferred branch. Classes in all of these subject areas are also available for children and teens at all six branches and online. My second pick, The Naked Don't Fear the Water, An Underground Journey with Afghan Refugees by Matthew Akins, nonfiction. This book offers a glimpse into the lives of Afghan refugees. It is primarily the story of an Afghan driver and translator, Omar. The author, a journalist, decides to make the journey with him as an undercover refugee in order to write about the experience firsthand. It gives insight into what drives people to flee what they love and know, the risks and lengths to complete a journey from war-torn Afghanistan to Europe are penned, not only about Omar, but about the other people they meet along the way. Issues of war, refugees, humanitarian issues, and migration are among those addressed. The Naked Don't Fear the Water by Matthew Akins. Okay, my next pick is Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus, fiction. In the 1960s, the beautiful, brilliant, and uncompromising Elizabeth Zott is a chemist. Not a woman chemist, a chemist, and a damn good one. In a twist of fate, she lands a job hosting a TV cooking show where she refuses to dumb down her content, always encouraging her audience to reach for their dreams. Because, as Elizabeth says, there isn't a woman in the world who's just a housewife. This debut has something for everyone, scientists, dog lovers, romantics, feminists, moms, fur moms, and especially foodies. It's a dash of Julia Child, a pinch of Breaking Bad, and the smattering of marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Oh, and by the way, the series will start October 13th on Apple TV, a nice addition to your book group discussion. Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. All right, before I get to my second round pick, I'd like to recommend a great and free website for book clubs called readinggroupguides.com. So whether you're trying to pick out your next read or getting ready to discuss a title with your book group, I think this site will have something for you. 
They offer these really great free printable reading guides for nearly 5,000 fiction books. Each guide includes an overview of the book, about 10 discussion questions, and a short bio of the author. It makes for a really nice launching point for your discussions. And if you're stuck trying to pick out what your next book club read will be, the site keeps a lot of helpful lists. Um, one of the coolest ones is one they put out on a yearly basis. It's their most requested list, which compile, compiles their most popular reading guides at the end of every year. And these lists offer a really cool insight into the most popular and discussable fiction in recent years. And for select books, they offer um, some short samples. So like chapter long excerpts of the books, if you wanna get a taste or a feel for how the book is before you fully commit to reading and discussing it. All right, um, we can go on to my second round pick, which is I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay, Fiction. In this book, we follow famous podcaster Bodie Kane as she returns to her New Hampshire boarding school to teach a winter break course. She tasks her students with creating, writing, and recording their own podcasts during the short semester. One student decides to focus on the infamous murder that took place at the school in the 90s, back when Bodie herself was a student. The victim was Bodie's roommate, and the school's athletic trainer was arrested and convicted of the murder. But did he really do it? Bodie wrangles with adolescent traumas as her students prod further into the murder. She grows increasingly conscious of the flaws in the case and begins to question everything she thought she knew about it. This literary mystery is compelling and thoughtful as it tackles the exploitative nature of true crime. And it also deals with other topics like racism, violence against women, and the biases of the criminal justice system. There's really so much to discuss and dissect with this one. I have some questions for you by Rebecca Mackay. The Survivalist by Kashana Cauley, fiction. So this is the kind of book where I worry that I'm going to trip all over my tongue talking about it because I love it so much. And like I've been telling people, like told the cashier at the grocery store about it last week. So anyway, in The Survivalist, which I hope gets optioned for a Netflix or Hulu show, we meet Aretha, who is tired of one of boring dates after boring dates. So she decides she's going to go to her date, her latest date and sweats. That way, when she's through with this, what's obviously going to be a horrible date, she can go back home and get right in bed. Well, she meets Aaron and she's surprised to discover that they have so many things in common, including both of them losing parents at a young age. Despite her friend's warning, her friend Nia warnings and some red flags including the fact that when she goes to his house and meets his friends um, one of who is building a bunker in the backyard and another who runs an illegal gun operation she still wants to to hang out with him and, be, and grow close because they have so many other things in common oh and did i mention that aretha is a high-powered mid, mid midtown law uh, works for a midtown law firm and the more stressed out she gets at her job, which is extremely stressful, the more she finds herself getting involved with Aaron and his friend's life. And before she knows it, she's involved in the illegal gun running. Well, this book is full of so much hysteric, well, not hysterical, that's not the right word. It's just so funny. And the writing is top notch. And um, the author is has a law background and she's written for The Daily Show with Trevor Noah. I really like this book and I can't wait for it to become a show because it just has to. The Survivalist by Kashana Cauley. Stash, My Life in Hiding by Laura Cathcart Robbins, nonfiction. Laura was living a life most only dream about, a Hollywood romance, a regular movie premieres, exclusive restaurants, country clubs. But to keep it all together, she was stashing pills in her designer shoes, doctor shopping, and secretly ordering bulk cases of alcohol. In this unique quit-lit memoir, which by the way, quit-lit is a genre that follows accounts of addiction and sober living. Um, in this book, you'll be following along and witness Laura's life of privilege and her fall from grace, becoming the cliche she wanted so badly to avoid, quote unquote, a black mother going to rehab. Stash is transparent, raw, and at times humorous. And ultimately it is another great reminder of how addiction does not discriminate. Stash by Laura Cathcart Robbins.
Hi, my next title is The Seven Moons of Molly Almeida by Shehan Karuna Tilaka. Fiction. We meet Molly after his death when he appears in the in-between, a parallel reality where souls go after death. He has seven nights, seven moons, to complete his afterlife booking and processing in order to move on to the light, which is the unspecified great beyond. Instead of doing what he's told, Molly follows a mysterious hooded spirit back to Earth where he tries to figure out who killed him and why. He can't remember anything from the day of his death or how he died, but the suspect list is potentially long, considering he was a photographer of wartime atrocities who sold his photos to any buyer he could find. His most shocking photos, however, are still in a box underneath the bed, somewhere in the realm of the living. Will he be able to contact his loved ones and see his life's work be revealed to the world before his seven moons run out? A darkly comic account of Sri Lanka's civil war in the 1980s, this is an impactful choice for readers who appreciate fiction that gives insight into major real world events. Partially speculative, partially political thriller, there's a lot going on here. Prior to reading this book, I highly recommend reviewing articles about some Sri Lankan history in order to understand the socio-political context before you start. And I'm going to include some um, links in the chat that I recommend that I found helpful when I was reading. Um, this is a complex read that is worth the effort if you're interested in a genre-defying international hit novel about life, love, and speaking truth to power. The Seven Moons of Mali Almeida by Shehan Karuna Tilaka. Okay, so now we will move into our third round. And my tip is don't be afraid to try a book with lousy book reviews. I mean, for example, The Great Gatsby. H.L. Mencken calls the story obviously unimportant, the characters mere marionettes often astonishingly lifelike, but nevertheless not quite alive. Okay, maybe I get the marionette thing, but... In a 1973 review of Sula, the New York Times criticized Toni Morrison, saying her work was boxed in by her insistence on writing about her own community without including interactions with whites. And then the New Yorker in 1936 in writing about Absalom Absalom by one William Faulkner said, the final blow up of what was once a remarkable, if minor, talent. Here you go. <clears throat> so don't be afraid of books with lousy reviews. The exceptions. Oh, this is a long title, but remember, we're going to send you the slide deck so you'll be able to catch up. So the title is The Exceptions, Nancy Hopkins, MIT, and the Fight for Women in Science by Kate Zernicki, nonfiction. Now, Wendy recommended Lessons in Chemistry, and I agree, absolutely great book, worthy of discussion. In fact, I participated in a group discussion of it with some of my pals, and we learned a lot from each other. So, of course, I have been suggesting it to my library customers. And what has struck me is the number of my female customers who have said that they are or were scientists or engineers, that they had read lessons in chemistry, and that the novel accurately reflected their experiences as women in their fields. The exception is a well-researched, well-documented non-fiction account of a similar circumstance and would make an excellent follow-up to Lessons in Chemistry, The Exceptions by Kate Zernicki. Okay, and my next pick is going to be Crook Manifesto by Colson Whitehead. Fiction. This fast-paced thriller set in 1970s New York City follows the trials and tribulations of Ray Carney a man struggling to maintain his legitimacy while na navigating the criminal underworld. As the city falls deeper into turmoil, Carney must confront his past and make difficult choices that test the limits of loyalty, morality, and survival. 
With each chapter taking place in different years, we witness Carney as a reluctant participant in schemes involving arson, robbery, and political intrigue. Accompanied by his partner in crime, Pepper, they navigate the treacherous waters of the entertainment industry, organized crime, and government corruption. With vivid characters and razor-sharp dialogue, Crook Manifesto is sure to captivate fans of urban crime fiction. Crook Manifesto by Colson Whitehead. My third book for the evening, Looking for Jane by Heather Marshall Fiction. Based in Canada, this book looks at historical and modern day views of reproductive rights. The lives of, of an unwed mother in 1960, a 1979 underground abortion with complications, a lesbian couple who suffered a miscarriage and are hoping in 2017 that they will have a baby. These and other characters all converge. And of course, Jane. As a doctor told a young lady, call around, keep asking for Jane, and eventually you'll get what you need. Just ask for Jane. Issues of friendship, love, choices, adoption, societal norms, unwed mothers, and pregnancy, whether longing to be pregnant, a miscarriage, legal and illegal abortions, are all addressed in this book, Looking for Jane by Heather Marshall. By Temnestra by Costanza Casati, fiction. For this debut, imagine Keanu Reeves and John Wick, but make him a woman, kill her children instead of her dog, make the setting ancient Greece, and here we have Clytemnestra. Heroine or villain, Helen of Troy's twin sister is a fierce warrior, murderous, mother and queen with a knack for survival. A diabolical feminist tale of prophecies, love and vengeance. It tells the story of one of ancient Greece's most notorious femme fatales whose life is destroyed by the men around her, yet she refuses to give them her power. And by the end of this one, you might just be humming the cell block tango he had it coming from Chicago the Musical. Clytemnestra by Costanza Casati. All right, for my round three pick, I've chosen A Fever in the Heartland, the Ku Klux Klan plot to take over the Ku Klux Klan's plot to take over America and the woman who stopped them by Timothy Egan, nonfiction. I am the law. That's what KKK leader DC Stevenson often boasted during his reign of terror over the Midwest in the 1920s. Stevenson was the villain behind the KKK's frightening resurgence. He rebranded the group as a hateful fraternal organization and grew membership into the millions. And all the while, of course, he was lining his pockets with the membership dues and fees. He used that to fund his over-the-top lifestyle, which included a 98-foot yacht and huge parties at his mansion with excessive amounts of alcohol at the height of prohibition. This amount of power, money, and influence allowed him and the KKK to infiltrate all facets of the government with ease. And it seemed like Stevenson and the KKK were on a path to the White House. But it all came to a screeching halt at the hands of one courageous woman, Madge Oberholzer. One New York Times writer remarked that this book often reads like a horror film script or a crime procedural, and I have to agree. It's so well researched, and Timothy Egan presents this troubling history in such an accessible and readable way. It's part two crime, part history, part portrait of an American monster, and a total page turner. A Fever and the Heartland by Timothy Egan. Okay, please forgive my pun when I say when it comes to book clubs and apps, you should come on and get appy. I'm sorry, I'm a huge David Cassidy Partridge family fan, so I had to steal that. But um, I wanted to mention a few apps that are either book club friendly or actually book club apps. And if you have any questions or would like more details with this, um, just remember that Mickey's tip about booking an appointment for online help, I would be glad 
to help you with this more. But some that I just really like, I'll highlight some of these. Of Fable and Book Clubs are both direct book club apps. So like you would go into the app and find book clubs related to either a book you like or types of books. So I love Fable and Book Clubs. Um, I'm, I am I think I'm a member of a mystery book club on book clubs. Then Book Binge and Like Mind and Close are more like, what should I read next? Or I'm trying to find a really good book to read as if that's a problem. But um, anywho, Like Mind is great. And also Likewise, which Wendy told me about. And thank you, Wendy, because it's my, one of my favorite apps. Likewise, will tell you other books that are like the book that you like. And it also is for TV shows and movies. So um, if you have any questions, just reach out through um, booking an appointment and you could note that you want to find out more about book club apps and that Angie um, would know about that. Although a lot of people would know about it too, but thank you. My third book is Roses in the Mouth of a Lion by Bushra Raymond. In this heartwarming tale, we meet Razia and her childhood friends as they navigate the vibrant tap tapestry of Queens. They spend their days bouncing between houses under the watchful eyes of Pakistani ants and lounging in backyards filled with sun, flowers, roses, and grapevines, but also weeds, old cars, and old sofas. Raymond beautifully captures the essence of young friendship brimming with pluck and tumult, while also delving into the complex racial dynamics that first-generation children faced in 1980s Queen. It, I love this book so much because it combines two of my favorite things, the 1980s and coming of age. Razia it straddles different cultures, excelling in reading the Quran, but also nursing an intense crush on George Michael. However, her life takes a turn when she gains the mission to a competitive uh, mid Manhattan high school and falls in love with a girl, forcing her to confront the difficult choice between her true self and pleasing her parents and her family's expectations. Raman's deeply immersive storytelling marks the arrival of an exciting new talent. And I would really recommend you read this, The Roses in the Mouth of a Lion by Bushra Raymond. The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich, Fiction. Imagine waking up on what you thought would be just another ordinary day, except it isn't. You walk out of your house and find a small mysterious wooden box, a box that reveals your feet. The length of your life shown through the length of a piece of string. What would you do? Would you open the box? Would you want to know? The measure chronicles how eight ordinary people's lives are turned upside down. The book is character driven and thought provoking. The long string versus short string revelations truly reminded me of the division in today's world and how the human race can turn against each other, even when it is done without any ill intent but it's also a story of hope. The measure truly makes you ask, not just when will it end, but how will it end? The Measure by Nikki Ehrlich. And for our last tip of the night, I am also offering you a resource for more book recommendations. And this is Novelist. If you've looked at our online research tools available through the library, you might be familiar with this. Novelist is a great database that includes information for book recommendations. And one cool feature that not a lot of people seem to know about is the appeal mixer, which I think is very cool. Novelist assigns different appeal factors to each of the titles there. And these appeals are based on writing style, character, tone, things like that. If you're on the main page of Novelist, which is on the top left slide, um, you can, or top left part of the slide, you can see examples of an appeal mix to browse through that they've already put together, such as reflective and leisurely pace. Below that, there's a line that I've highlighted and put an arrow to that says, want to make your own combo? Try our appeal mixer. So that's where you can plug in different combinations, one to three appeals at a time, and you get results from those keywords in the Novelist database. So along with the titles and the descriptions of each book, you can also see the availability of the title, which is really helpful if you need a certain number of copies for your book club. 
And you can also see read-alikes for the title and the author for each of the items that come up. So if you're knowing that, hey, I really like this book or I really love this author, what are some other books or some other authors that are similar? The people behind Novelist have put together a list and it explains the similarity of why they say this author and this author are similar. This is a really great tool if you or your book club is looking for something with a particular vibe or a particular type of representation. For example, if you wanted ideas of novels you could read in honor of Hispanic and Latina Heritage Month that we have going on right now, you could select Latino, Latina, Latine as a character type like I did in the example on the screen. So Isabel Allende is the first one that happens to come up. And if you ever want help accessing novelists, again, you can schedule a Tech 101 with us at any branch, or you could just go into your local branch and see if someone can help you. So that brings us to our final recommendation of the evening, Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara, Fiction. Both witty and poignant, Mara's epic novel explores censorship, fascism, propaganda, and what it means to be an outsider, primarily set in 1940s Los Angeles. The story centers Maria, an ambitious Italian immigrant woman working as an associate producer at Mercury Pictures, a small movie studio facing congressional investigation and potential bankruptcy. Not great for her career. Amongst her in Hollywood are other emigres who fled Europe looking for freedom and stability in America, only to find their lives restricted after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, when the US government requires many of them to register as enemy aliens. Maria thus finds her life confined to a radius of a few miles in LA, which parallels her own father's internal exile back in Calabria, Italy under Mussolini's rule. When a young Calabrian man appears in LA, connecting her back to her father, Maria must confront her family's past and future. A blend of family saga, screwball comedy, and historical drama, this story will inspire reflection and discussion about current events while transporting you to the past. Mercury Pictures Presents by Anthony Mara. And with that, we reach our Q&A. Oh, how do we access the novel novelist database? Is it linked from the HC Library site? Yes. Yes, so if you go to um, research or online resources, you know, get to that list of our online research tools, the very first category on the list of different resources is book recommendations. And so there's novelist, and then there's also novelist K through eight, that's specifically for children and um, middle grade and teen. Okay, so my fellow presenters, do you have the Q&A open? I'm going to take the first one, which is, can we attend book club meetings as a one-off in a month where we are particularly interested?